Well, to talk about this now, I'm joined by Christine Cuniff, principal at LVS Ascot. Now, you're a non-selective mm. independent school, and I know you couldn't hear all of that interview, but you know, he was making the same points that I'm making, but in terms of social mobility, uh, grammar schools can be a very good thing. Uh, but you, um, you went to grammar school, didn't you? For two years. And? Say no more. Well, I think I left. <laughs> My mother took me out before I was expelled. Right. That could have been your own behaviour as, as opposed to a problem with it, the grammar school. I'll tell you what it was. I didn't come from a priv privileged background. I had a state education. My mother had aspirations for me to go to a grammar school and I was tutored through what was then the 12th plus in Buckinghamshire. Yeah. Uh, ended up at a high performing grammar school with a high IQ but no real grounding in education. And it was a failure to start with. And I had two of the most miserable years of my life. And I think, you know, when children don't engage with education, when they're not believed in and, and you can buy into what the school is offering, then sometimes your behaviour does slip. And my behaviour did slip. And I think we see that in schools where children are not engaged in education. And I'm passionate that education should be for all children, the best for everyone. And, you know, you were talking about comprehensives. Why aren't they good enough? Shouldn't that be where the focus is, that all children have access to education? But if you've got... If you've got um, a comprehensive in a deprived inner city area in this country, an area that has got huge social problems, um, language problems, that not everybody's speaking the same language that's attending those classes, very difficult in that environment for the really bright youngster to achieve their very best, isn't it? So the first thing you have to do is look at the funding. What is the funding? Is it good enough for a school like that? You know, I, you know, I, I don't work money in the city. So, money can't solve everything. No, but money can actually buy you staff and it can buy you extra vision. It can stretch. I, I sort of heard setting going on yeah. there, streaming. Yeah. And it gives you, if you've got more staff, you can stream, you can stretch every so, child. So you do believe in streaming? I, I do, you know, because every child should be brought on to the maximum of their potential, but at the same time in a happy environment as well. So just because there are children who might have learning needs, I might have difficulty accessing the internet whatever the problem all those children should have the opportunity to learn and at the moment in this country we don't do that is it unfair at 11 years old and then 13 years old to divide children up it is and i'll tell you why because i'm a mum of three children they're all grown up now i've been in education nearly 30 years i've had experiences that weren't very good in education myself and you see children developing at different times in their life as well now we already write off children and say they failed when they don't pass the 11 plus when they don't pass it or get good SATS results, when they don't pass common entrance exam, we're already writing children off. A third of children don't pass their GCSE maths or English, do they? So you were, telling, that... we're telling children from the start <coughs> that they're failing. But Christine, isn't that a good training for life? No, it's not, because children... Because the whole of, but hang on, the whole of life is a series of tests. But it is, but don't and we And some all... we pass and some we fail. I bet you developed at different times to your peers at school. Well, I'm probably still growing up now, well, I don't know. Well, aren't we? Yeah, <laughs> and you get better with age. You definitely get better with age. No, but, but, here's, but here's my point. The idea that, you know, you do, you do well or badly in GCSEs or A-levels or whatever yeah. it is, well, tough. Yeah, it is tough. Because life's like that. But it is. But then there are some of us who might have failed at 16, who did well at 18 or at 21... I didn't get my MBA till I was in 2013. So I believe in lifelong learning. And life isn't as simple as that. We've all got to do the best we can with what we're given. There are 163 grammar schools still left. Buckinghamshire, of course, has a few. Yeah. Kent has a lot, but it's, you know, over the whole of the country, it's not very many. Most of them are now super selective, of course, not yeah. just selective. It's the top 2% in areas, whatever it is. Would you be, so would you be opposed to an extension of the number of grammar schools? I'm not opposed to anything that's good for the best of the children of this country. But all the time we're failing most children, well, a majority of children, I think we are, and we're looking at social mobility, we're not addressing that. So I think there's wider issues. I don't... Anything that provides the best for children, totally agree. So your emphasis then would be, rather than what Jonathan Gullis is pushing, your emphasis would be to improve the worst comprehensives. I, I believe you need to get and then do something about it, because children are failing on a daily basis, and it's not their fault. Said with passion. Christine Carniff, thank you very much <laughs> indeed. You.